right, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chuck. This is Hardly Homesteading. Today we are going to fill up some garden beds using Mel's Mix. Uh, one third part vermiculite, one third part peat moss, one third part organic compost. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing. In other news, my compost is cooking again. It's up to over 100 degrees now. Bad news is that my seedlings don't appear to be doing very well. The pepper leaves are curling, and um, the uh, broccoli is getting a little bit leggy. So I uh, repotted the broccoli, and um, I'm trying different things with the peppers. Um, you know, I think the peppers and broccoli require have different requirements, and growing them together is just causing a problem. Uh, the broccoli is, we're getting close to this part of the season where I can actually plant the broccoli outside. I think, you know, I heard some people talking about planting next week, um, but we'll see how they do. I, I put the broccoli in new cups uh, with um, some new potting mix made out of the uh, same thing that I'm putting in the beds pretty much, uh, but I added some worm castings into it. so. Yeah, so that's what we're doing, that's what's going on. Let's uh, fill some beds. So we are just going to do equal parts basically just going to go off the largest packaged amount so the peat moss comes in uh, three cubic foot blocks so I'm going to put that out and then I'm going to add in three cubic feet of compost and three cubic feet of vermiculite uh, so yeah When I got a new garden hose, uh, it's on Amazon. Flexilla. I can put the uh, link in the description. Flexzilla. It is a pretty awesome garden hose, and for the quality, it wasn't too expensive. So, something worth checking out. So my calculations were pretty spot on. Um, this is about what I had calculated for uh, how much um, soil that we were gonna need per bed. It's quite a lot, but uh, I think we'll make it work. So, all right, so we're gonna continue filling beds.
right, so as you can see, we got a couple beds completely filled. Um, back breaking work. Uh, it's quite a bit of work just to fill one of these things. Uh, so if you're thinking about doing this at home, that's something to keep in mind. Um, these are really heavy. You know, we could probably try to use a compost pump with them. We try to mix it. They're empty. I took the stuff out of them. Yeah, so we might try to use a compost tumbler to mix them up because the way we were doing it is pretty painful. So we're gonna take a lunch break. Very stressful. So we just got back from uh, Rural King. I picked up the rest of the compost I'm gonna need. And we are gonna stack it up. I got enough compost for the rest of my project, at least unless I build more beds. Um, we still are going to need more peat moss and more vermiculite. There she is, 20 bags of compost. And two bags of peat moss. And two bags of peat moss. Probably going to need another five bags of that. All right, so it's been a pretty successful day. We uh, filled up almost four of our beds. Uh, we stopped by Royal King and picked up the rest of the compost we'll need to finish this project. The only reason I did that today is because it looked like they were selling out and I didn't want them to run out and me not be able to get it when I needed it. So um, We are going to mix up another batch of Mel's Mix to throw in here and then that'll be it. I'll need to get some more vermiculite before we can do any more beds. So that might be on the plan for tomorrow. So That's where we're at. Tail of the shrimp before you eat it. Mm -hmm. Got it. These are salty and delicious.
right, it is Sunday. It is a beautiful morning. And today we are gonna try to build a raised garden bed. Not out of a 55 gallon drum, but uh, this space right here in front of my house uh, used to be a flower bed. Somebody probably planted it 10 years ago and then never did anything with it since. So, uh, you know, last fall I tore it up, tilted it up, pulled all the shrubs and stuff out. And so I am going to try to use all that rough sawn lumber to build a retaining wall here and we will have a, another garden bed. I don't know if I'm gonna do any more of the barrel planters or not, um, we'll see. But uh, yeah, that's what we're doing today. So. What I'm thinking here is, uh, yeah, so we have about 11 inches. These boards are a uh, What is that? These boards are, uh, Three and seven eighths. So I guess we're gonna have to go. I guess at the first board I can dig down a little bit, about an inch, make a little bit of a trough, I guess you'd call it, so the first board can sit into the ground about an inch. Because, you know, we'd have to do three high of these. Unless, unless I just do eight inches and then I just dig it deeper. Cause we don't have that much of this wood and I'm, obviously if I didn't have to buy more wood, that would be best. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, I have to think about it. All right, so apparently 11 inches is the standard height for a raised garden bed. For whatever reason, I was thinking it was 18 inches which it's a good thing because it saves me a lot of uh, money buying more lumber. <laughs> um, uh, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is do eight inches from the ground up and I can dig out two inches of soil because I might be able to finish it if I only do eight inches. We'll have to, we'll have to see. I was also thinking that uh, I can reroute this gutter, put PVC all along this, and reroute that gutter down on the end there, drill holes in the PVC, so it's got a sort of self-watering system. I don't know, if you guys think that's a good idea, let me know down in the comment section below. That gutter is actually only attached to that one small little piece of my house right now. That's why. Originally I was going to do two rain barrels, but it seems like there's almost no point because it's such a small piece of gutter uh, attached to it. Yeah, so I think doing too high would not be a problem at all. Have to do a little piece that way. But, uh, yeah, I think it'll work out pretty well. So, what I intend on doing, that's why, you know, I was going around and trying to line them up a little bit. 
because I want the joint to be essentially around the same place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these smaller pieces that we have here. Basically going to cut this into a wedge with a miter saw or spike or whatever you want to call it. So, and then I'll cut it to length and then I'll just use a uh, hammer there to uh, pound it down into the ground. And then I can just attach those boards to uh, that. I think it'll be pretty easy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just uh, clean it up a little bit. I'll hit it with the rake. And I might turn up the soil a little bit there. Uh, and I need to line it out, measure it and line it out exactly where uh, it's gonna go. Then I'll cut my stakes and then we'll start assembling. Seems pretty easy. We'll see. Alright, so uh, these are the stake, this is the stake that I made, I made it 18 inches long uh, out of the same wood and my plan is to just pound it into the ground and I will screw these boards to that and that will be it. Now we'll have to see if it actually works.
yeah, the camera's not gonna be able to record much longer. Why is it almost dead? It's at 18%. Okay. Well, What's up, dog? All right, so uh, my GoPro overheated and the battery died in the middle of the process, but uh, so sorry you didn't get to see that, but uh, I pretty much got it finished. It's uh, not perfect or pretty, but uh, it's functional. I think this was a lot better use of this wood instead of using building those uh, barrel beds. This is probably the equivalent of 10 of those and I probably would have only been able to bought, build one or two. Or it's probably about five of those barrel beds maybe. But, yep, so that's where we are. That's what we did. Uh, I wanna thank you for watching. If you got any value out of this, please hit the like button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you subscribe. Hit the little bell so you get notifications for all the videos we put out. Uh, I want you to want to thank you for watching again. Remember, diligence is the mother of good luck. Thanks for watching. Again.